Hey, what's going on guys? Nick Unsworth here and uh, welcome to Life on Fire TV. I'm here with Erica. Tish Offer. <laughs> Get your... Tish off her. <laughs> Get your tush tish off of her. And so, uh, Erica, I'm super excited because on this episode, you're going to hear about our mentee. Uh, we've got a mentor-mentee relationship going on. And also, you're going to be doing some interning work with us with Life on Fire. And she's got a crazy heck of a story and how she took some of her biggest challenges and is turning them into huge opportunities in her life and how you can too. And then how she's diving into a brand new industry and she's going to build up expert status in a summer and then going to be teaching others on how they too can market on Pinterest. So lots of cool stuff coming at you. Hey, what's going on? Nick Unsworth here and I'm a kick business coach and I'm on an absolute mission to help you find your purpose in life to help you love what you do for work every single day, to help you be the rock star that you are meant to be, to make more money than you ever thought was possible, and to have more time freedom so you can actually enjoy the life that you're living. I'm here to help you set your life on fire. All right, so we're fired up for today because I've got Erica. <laughs> Tish offer. Tish offer. <laughs> In the house, literally in my house. And um, so I think what I'd like to do is just to start by, let's get comfortable, let's get cozy. Um, this is your first time on camera? Yes, doing my anything? first time, yep. Okay, mm -hmm. well, the first time that I did anything on camera, it was really bad. <laughs> it was like, I walked up to the camera and I hit the button to turn it on and ran back and it took me eight hours to say my name and who I am and what I did. <laughs> so if we're, if this video is any, any, uh, even a second less than eight hours, then we're totally good. Well, good thing I'm with my mentor it, to teach me along the way. <laughs> All right. So what we're going to do, we're going to, um, just going to basically, you know, have a little conversation. We're going to dive in. And so what I'd love for you to do is share with you guys, share with them, uh, share with you what, uh, how we met and that scenario and that situation that will provide some context. We'll just roll from there. Well, um, I had heard of a opportunity through a program I'm involved with called Just In Time, mm -hmm. and Nick was holding a conference for former foster youth or people that are in foster care right now, and basically teaching about how to become an entrepreneur or a life of entrepreneurship. Yeah. And I went and attended, and ever since then, we just um, clicked. I applied for the mentorship, and I got it, and ever since then, I have just been under Nick's wing. Oh, <laughs> it's because she is a hungry young entrepreneur that is just a rock star in, in the making. And so it was, it was really cool. So basically, um, you know, it was, it was a crazy experience. And I don't know how much of this I've told you, but, but December 8th, I woke up in the middle of the night after going to the Rock Church and they had this whole thing, Toys for Joy. Mm -hmm. And so it was like 10,000 people line up to give toys. And I was like, you know what, what how can we do something that's cool that, that's gonna give back? And I was thinking like, I was originally going to do toys, but toys don't create like impact in the world. They're like great for mm -hmm. a little kid that doesn't have toys, but figure like if we could work with, you know, the foster youth and identify, you know, and find a couple, you know, young entrepreneurs that are hungry, motivated, you know, what could we do if we work together for, for the rest of the year? So mm -hmm. basically what we did was we did a, a, a party. So on my birthday, I, um, you know, rented out a whole bar in like club sidebar and we had like lots of entrepreneurs there everyone paid a hundred dollars cover and then that also fundraised mm -hmm. then from there we threw an event you know in february where we did the you know event at the rock church mm -hmm. and so basically guys we you know we donated a uh, hundred kindles to foster youth and we figured that that you know someone that maybe needs a kindle or someone that you know um, needs a role model, you know, could really benefit from it. And then, so we ended up just totally hitting it off and, you know, with you being so fired up, so hungry. It was like, all right, let's work mm -hmm. together. Let's see what we can create. And so um, that's part of what we want to share. So also, I think what's really cool is for you to share with us um, some of your background, you know, so some of the, I think what's cool, we call it the, the hero's journey is, you know, something that's happened in your past that's been a challenge and those who are truly unbelievably successful are the ones that can take the challenges, whether it's from the past or challenges that happen, you know, today and in the future, take those challenges and they turn it around in their mind and use it as fuel, you know, fuel to, to grow and as opportunity, as a blessing in disguise. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about, you know, your past and kind of, and how you're turning that around today. 
Well, um, when I was about two years old, I was placed into foster care. Mm -hmm. And then from then, I just stayed into foster care, moving around. I've probably lived in about 30 different homes, gone to wow. many different schools, you know, always meeting new people, networking. Even as a kid, you don't really yeah. know um, that, but you, you're you just meeting everybody. And then, um, you know, high school came, I was still moving around, and I was told I needed to get adopted because mm. I had nowhere else to go. I was going to be homeless. Yep. And so um, I had gotten adopted, but unfortunately, it didn't work out with my adopted parents. Mm -hmm. And so they had kicked me out when I was 16 in high school. Yeah. And from then I just worked every single day. I was working 14 hour shifts a day in high school, couldn't really even experience high school. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, had to move around. And through all that though, I was able to find a scholarship opportunity mm -hmm. and go to SDSU. So now Sweet. I'm attending San Diego State University on a full ride scholarship. Dang. Even though, you know, through all these obstacles and all these blocks that were in my way, I was still able to make it to this point and that point led me to you and now yeah. a life on fire but boom <laughs> that is so cool so um and and so what do you think what do you think what it was it and how you can turn all that around and said you know what, i've got to just kick it into overdrive and work i mean you know was there things that you consciously did or you just it was just fight or flight i mean it was just survival mode and just getting a job and making it happen you know it was just it really came down to um, no one's going to take care of me but myself. Yeah. No one's, you can't really rely on anybody but yourself. Mm. And at 16 year old, at 16 years old and looking at nowhere to live, mm. no food on the table, nothing to do, it really opened my eyes. And I realized I had yeah. to get a job and I had to do all of that. But then I did realize once I got a job and I was, yeah. all my time was taken up, I wasn't able to experience life. Mm -hmm. So now I want to put my time in something towards that I can have a life. I can yeah. have time freedom and all of that and you know give live the back dream. live the dream live and the not dream. just work a nine to five every single day cool and so so basically from that you know in kind of hanging with us and just seeing what else is out there in the world i mean what has um what's what what are you fired up about as far as being an entrepreneur i mean what excites you for the future I'm just so excited because um it really just dawned on me the other day i was never told that i could be anything i want to be i can I can do anything I want to do and mm -hmm. I feel like as an entrepreneur and this life on fire, I can yeah. really sit back and say, Erica, who are you and who do you want to be and what do you want to do? What do you love and what do you want to just conquer and just excel at and yeah. just make people want to need your help and just everything in that and it just really opened yeah. my eyes and now I'm just like, I can do anything I put my mind to. That right there, that is like, I'm, I literally have goosebumps right now thinking about it because that's something that um, I, th I feel like I was I was fortunate mm -hmm. where you know my mother literally always said to me like you can do anything you put your your mind to or like do anything your little heart desires and I always had that in my head mm -hmm. now on the other side my father was just super hard working and I got those lessons from him and that was inspirational and as I got older I've always been able to just fearlessly go into things but what's crazy is that not everyone has someone in the back of your mind or behind you saying you can do anything mm -hmm. and I think what's so encouraging about this particular episode is that you've got you know from your back you know from your humble beginnings of you know not having a family to turn to and then to really be surround yourself with the right people and have the attitude that you know what you can do anything you put your mind to mm -hmm. and so whether you're 20 years old or whether you're 45 years old or 65 years old you know, one of the messages from this particular episode is that it's never too late to make that decision and to go towards your fear or to go towards what you love to do. Because at the end of the day, it's, it's a decision that we make. And if you're settling at your job or you're doing something that you don't love, that's on you. You know, mm -hmm. any one of us can make that decision to do what we love and to just think big and believe that you can do it. And then it's just about the action to, to, to take it on from there. So, so, you've, so I love it. You've got the mindset that you can do anything that you want to do in life. So we're kind of, boom, we're at that. That's like a huge deal. Yeah. That takes, that takes sometimes months to break down their past and to, and to get someone to the point where they are willing to believe in themselves again. Mm -hmm. So you're there. You're ready. Yep. You're fired up. So I'm going to kind of share a little bit of a shortcut about what's happened since. So uh, one of the things that we teach is that, you know, to take someone and think about what are you good at? You know, we've got, we do the, we had the strength finder. So it's like, mm -hmm. what are you good at? What are you passionate about? And tell us about what kind of came back with that for you. Mm, I just found that I was good at, you know, really um, communicating with others and yep. talking to others and lending out helping hands mm -hmm. and just... Um, 
I'm just a really hard worker. And yeah. I know when I put my mind towards something, something that I'm very passionate about and something yeah. I care about, I just, I just blow it up. I, well, and yeah. so that's just really what came out of that. And some strengths I have, like I said, is um, communicating. I really like yeah. speaking. I like to. I would like to be a public speaker. Mm -hmm. And you know, basically, um, what I would say would help others and mm -hmm. would benefit them. Yeah. Okay. And so I think one of the nice the nice tiebacks is that from your, you know, so we we think of it as you know the three S's. So it's what's your story, what's your stance, and then what's your strategy. And so your background story is about you know, being a foster kid and, you know, and to be able to take that and use that as fuel to grow and that's your why. So tell us about that, the why and how, you know, what you want to do, you know, as a successful entrepreneur, how you want to give back, you know, what would you love to do ideally to help others? Ideally to help others. I just, you know, um, the foster care system is so corrupt. It's mm -hmm. so, it's so sad. I was probably a star case that you could sit there and say that was corrupt because I was just passed by years after years mm -hmm. after years, just, Nobody, nobody saw my file. Nobody just gave me a chance, and mm -hmm. that's where it's corrupt. At these children are thrown into homes because mm -hmm. their families or parents can't take care of them the way they should, and yeah. it's not their fault. And they're not given a fair chance as everybody else to have a stable, healthy, prosper life yeah. as a child. And I really want to make the public aware of that. We're aware of all this, the situations and all the stuff that's going on around the world, but what about the future generation? Mm -hmm. This is our future generation, and more. Uh, so many children are in foster care and yeah. they're just not getting the opportunity that they should. And I just really want to um, give them the opportunity, start doing foundations for foster care youth, mm -hmm. for young women that don't have mothers to turn to, that don't know, oh, I should go to college. I shouldn't be a teen mom. I shouldn't, you know, turn to drugs or anything mm -hmm. like that. There, there needs to be support out there yeah. that there isn't. And I feel that I could be that support just because I've lived through it. Mm -hmm. I lived through all of it. I've experienced all of it i think what's powerful is that from just from mindset you know it's it's one of these things where you've you've taken a major challenge from your past and instead of that being something you know that you're holding on to as a victim you've already internalized it in your mind and you're going to use that experience that you can relate to others mm -hmm. and then that's your why that's why you want to build this big business not only just for your own life and being successful and and having a great lifestyle but to use that as fuel to then grow your business bigger, faster, stronger, and be able to give back and help people. And that's one of the aspects of a life on fire. One of the pillars is that to take what it is that you're really passionate about, you know, and for you to be really passionate about helping these kids and helping them overcome that too. And so having that purpose into your life and into your business is one of the most important aspects of, of building a sustainable, strong business that, is, that has momentum. And so with Life on Fire, our mission is to help people love what they do. You know, and we're, shoot, we're building a school in Guatemala where we're trying to inspire and help other entrepreneurs not only build a business, but build a business with purpose. And to see you doing that mm -hmm. already at your young age of 20 is awesome, right? And it's going to inspire other people around you too. And so one of the last things I want to just drill down on is that you've got the 3S strategy. You've got what's your story, you know, what's your stance. So we heard your background story as a foster kid. Your stance is really... Um, that you want to help other foster kids and not have gone through the pain that you did and inspire others around you. And then what your strategy is, how you're going to get there is um, tell us about, you know, kind of, I know we're just getting started, but your vision with Pinterest and Pinterest marketing. You know, um, Pinterest marketing, I want to be able to take life on fire mm -hmm. and um, really just blow it up through marketing. Mm -hmm. There aren't... Um, many courses or online things with it. Right now, mm -hmm. there's one woman, um, Melanie... Duncan. Duncan. She, Who's Mel awesome. Yes, Melanie Duncan is awesome. And she is the one woman right now that is you know, going through Pinterest and actually marketing off of it and having courses. And I want to be able to guide others through mm -hmm. my courses to mm -hmm. make their business booming, make mm -hmm. them go six figures up within a year through yeah. Pinterest and just getting their name out there because social media right now, that's just the way to go. Yeah. And Pinterest is just moving up. First it was Facebook, then mm -hmm. um, Insta well, then Twitter, yeah. then here comes Pinterest. Like yeah. we need to jump on board and I feel like that that's the perfect place for me. I love it. So, so some takeaways um, on that for you is that is, I mean, I think just you, you know, being so young and straight up fearless and just going towards it. I mean, you've never, you weren't even on Pinterest before we started talking, mm -hmm. right? So you've never had no awareness nope. uh, or not that you didn't know about it, but you weren't on it, right? And so that's one of these things where for me as an entrepreneur and in, in the same spot as you, except for me, I was 
uh, shoot, I mean, I think I, at the time, must have been, what, 28, uh, 27 years old. And I was trying to find my way. I was overwhelmed. I had bought all these courses, and I didn't know what else to do. Had to cover 3500 bucks to pay my bills, 50 grand in debt, and I'm just like pulling my hair out thinking, what am I going to do? And I looked at the industry and said, you know what? Why don't I learn a skill? Because if I know how to be a great and excellent marketer, then I can not only learn how to make money for myself, but I can teach other people how to make money. Mm -hmm. And that is something that will never go away. If you know how to market and you're good at getting sales, you will never ever have an issue with money for the rest of your life. And so what I love about with working with you is that you're fearlessly heading into Pinterest and marketing on Pinterest. So for those of you that don't know about Pinterest, it's a social network just like Facebook, but it's really driven by photos. Mm -hmm. And so the cool thing is that no one knows how to really market on this. Large corporations mm -hmm. don't have a clue. Uh, we're at Life on Fire. We, I don't really use Pinterest. I know some about it because I'm, I am you know, an expert in Facebook marketing, so I get it. Mm -hmm. But I'm not on it. I'm not an expert on it. And so what's super exciting is that you're taking someone like Erica Tisch, Offer. Offer her. <laughs> and, you know, to drill down, she's buying courses and she's learning the industry. And then from there to take that knowledge and then have a, your first case study. Mm -hmm. So if you ever want to be an expert at something, it's all about, all right, um, step one is gain some knowledge and you're doing that with courses. Mm -hmm. Step number two is you need to go out and get a client and we call it getting an anchor client, someone that's got some influence behind them. Mm -hmm. And so what's cool is that you're getting the experience on, you know, just buying the courses and getting some, some understanding of how it works. Mm -hmm. You're also, you join the platform and then from there we're serving as your anchor client. So we're now paying, you know, Erica to help us with our, our Pinterest. So mm -hmm. she's now going to then get the luxury of being able to tinker with things and test the strategies and see what works. And then as soon as you figure out what works, now at that point, you then go out and I want to see you go out and get other customers in the local market. Could mm -hmm. be in San Diego, could be online. And the cool thing is that that's going to provide extra cash flow for you. You're going to have more experience. And as soon as you know what the results you can get for someone, you can charge that amount. It's value-based pricing. So if she helps us make five grand a month, well, you know what? That's worth three grand a month. And there's your pay raise, right? So the whole thing is like when I started with Facebook marketing, as soon as I realized I could take someone and run ads and if they were going to spend three grand in ads and I could help them make 10, then I could charge three. You know, as soon as I could help someone make a hundred thousand dollars, I could charge $30,000. Mm -hmm. And the same is true for you. So in narrowing your niche and being the expert in that, we're going to watch Erica Tish offer of her. <laughs> we're going to watch her grow this business. And it's going to be super exciting because everyone who um, has always wanted to become an expert, everyone that's, mm -hmm. that's had a dream to just go out and step into, you know, um, being an expert at something, you're going to watch it unfold in front of your eyes with Erica. We're going to keep you guys posted and share updates and you're going to have to teach us yep. what's working and then teach everybody the on what's working. The ins and outs of Pinterest. The ins and outs <laughs> of Pinterest. So that's cool. And I think one of the big takeaways is also just about narrowing your niche and branding. So anytime I'm working with a client, we always need to drill down because if, you know, Erica said, well, I'm going to be a social media marketing expert, which means Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest, and all these things, then no one would know really exactly what you do. Mm -hmm. And so as soon as you go from that all the way to Pinterest, now mm -hmm. people can start to, to relate and say, oh, Erica, oh, the, the Pinterest girl. And then mm -hmm. next thing you know, your name travels and you start to get... Um, you start to get notoriety in your industry. So whether you're into social media marketing or coaching or whatever your niche is, whatever you love to do, what I again encourage you to do is to take that passion, connect it to your purpose, connect it to a strong why, a meaning, and then go out and research that topic. Go out and get that anchor client that has influence. Create a case study and that case study will then serve to be something that you can create as an information product to then scale and help lots and lots of people. And so that model has worked for me, the model has worked for hundreds of our clients and it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And um, so cool, so we'll have you back on to share the ins and outs of Pinterest and um, anything else that you'd like to add before we, we, we head out to run around the streets of Pacific Beach and pay it forward? Um, you know, I'm just really excited right now. I'm just living a life on fire right now and I'm just ready to blow up Pinterest. <laughs> That's it. She's ready. And so one thing that I always like to, to ask uh, when I remember is um, what's one thing most people don't know about you? One thing that... Um, just a random factoid. 
you know, I really want to be a rapper sometimes. Really? <laughs> yes, I I can rap sometimes. <laughs> some, all right, so we're, we may have to have some intro uh, music. <laughs> Next time I will have intro music. <laughs> a little rap action, all right. Well, cool, well, cool, cool, cool. Well, guys, I just want to say that... Um, you know, if you're not where you want to be and if you feel that, you know, there's something inside of you that wants to come out and you want to take your life and your business to the next level, then just stay plugged in with us. Check out Life on Fire TV. Go to the podcast, subscribe and just dive into immerse yourself with other episodes and really just let us help you, you know, get to that next level faster. Also want to encourage you to go to lifeonfirewebinar.com. So we've got a really awesome webinar coming up where we're going to be teaching what we're calling the entrepreneur's shortcut, how to get from where you're at today to that next level even faster. So lifeonfirewebinar.com and we'll see you guys soon.